Hello, beautiful people. My name is Athel, YouTuber, talking about marriage, relationships, and getting what you want from them. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about missed signals and how important you realize you are missing a signal. And I'm going to sort of tell it from the worst case scenario perspective. And this is from, I want you to understand, this is from the point of view of someone that has now been dealing with marriage, relationships, and a fear busting situations on the internet since mid 2009. I first started uh, really delving into the stuff um, on a forum called Talk About Marriage in mid 2009. I started my blog about it in you know, January 2010, and I had a forum myself there for uh, about four years as well. And there is a really, really predictable pattern with what happens when people come to internet forums or go searching online for this stuff. There's an incredibly predictable pattern, and you're not likely to see it unless you've been watching this stuff for just years on end. So this is from the perspective of someone who's been watching this for eight years. So when someone first comes to the internet, goes to a forum wherever it is, or a Reddit, and they start saying to this group of people like, I can see that there are some red flag situations with what my wife is doing, because I'm doing it from the guy's perspective. I can see some red flag things that my wife is doing. You know, she's now she's locked her phone or she has some sort of missing unaccounted time that is not accounted for. or She's dressing better or yeah, she shaved her vagina for no reason or whatever it was. And they're sort of advanced to these red flags. And then, of course, everyone in the group goes, oh, my God, dude, she's totally cheating on you. She's totally cheating. You have to jump on this immediately. And the guy says, no, no, not my wife. That couldn't happen. It's just some red flags. And then he goes away. And this period could last like a, a week or a month or whatever. And then he comes back and says, oh, my God, you guys were totally right. You were totally right. She's totally cheating. You know, I hacked her email. I can see all the, the emails between her and the other guy. I put a voice activated recorder in a car. I can now hear her talking about this stuff. I found hotel receipts. She's totally cheating. And then, of course, it all blows up into some sort of confrontation thing where it shakes out one way or the other. Either she breaks off the affair and confesses or she doesn't and goes or or whatever it is. And that's pretty much that sort of second stage of it. Everything blows up when it's discovered. And then there's a third stage which can last you know, a number of months or a, or a year or two or whatever as the whole thing really does shake out after that initial blow up period. And that's a roller coaster of ups and downs of is she going to go back to this guy? Are we ever going to forgive each other? Are we going to move forward? Can we rebuild? Are we getting divorced? Are we going to marriage counseling? And it's a very long, slow sort of methodical process. And it may end in divorce or it may not. And then often at that point, the guy kind of drops off the website. He doesn't really necessarily go as much. Or maybe he keeps going. Either way, it doesn't really matter. But then there's this fourth stage to this uh, where, and it could be a year, it could be 18 months, it could be two years later where it really has all shaken out. The dust has kind of settled a bit. And then at some, at some point, this guy comes back and says, yeah, I came here, I, it was all discovered, it all blew up, and then this is what happened. And then he says something like, but, you know, you know, there were, all, you know, in fairness, there were, there were those times, you know, three or four years before she had the affair where she wrote me all those letters saying how unhappy she was in the relationship. There was the time that she, you know, took off her wedding ring and just cried in the bathroom for an hour. There was the time where she left and went to live with her mother for a week. Um, you know, there was, there was all these times that she asked for marriage counseling and there's all these missed signals predating the affair situation by months, years. And it's a really sad and tragic thing to think that, um, that perhaps if some of these missed signals were picked up on, 
they were followed up on, they were taken seriously, or the guy knew what he could do or should do, or had some sort of tools to deal with the situation then when the situation was just bad. Maybe this whole affair thing could have been avoided. And I know there are no excuses for the moral boundary crossing of, of cheating on someone. There's no excuses for having the affair. But let me tell you, as someone who's been doing this for eight years, there's always, always some kind of explanation of the environment and the story arc that got to this point. You know, it's like, it's like it, it, if you're only looking at just the affair itself, it's like only watching the, the last three minutes of a two hour movie. The story that happened before then, you, we're just looking at the, you know, the explosive highlight at the end. There's always a story arc, there's always a progression. There's always some sort of explanation of how we got here. Which is why missed signals are just so freaking sad. So, so yeah, I guess that's a kind of a bleak one, but it's the reality. Yeah, if you're missing signals, you got to pick up on them because at some point the signals stop, and that's really bad. <laughs>